that like a constructor that uh, follows the pipeline pattern. And there's no magic. There's no methods that uh, do something, but you don't know why does it do it. You don't need to worry much about these architectural decisions. Our company offers various e-commerce solutions for companies and clients in the DEF region. So we build like custom solutions that meets uh, the need of our customers, the specific business requirements. And those solutions are usually based and created on top of the Spryker score. We use Spryker for our e-commerce shop. We sell like a, a hundred of products every day, and the Spryker is basically the the, the bone of our company. Yeah, so we're mainly building huge e-commerce systems that requires a lot of strength of taking a lot of load of people and uh, uh, d different and complex uh, business applications. Most of the business applications that need to be covered are mainly already exists in the Spryker. So you can reuse it, extend it. It's really flexible and easily maintainable and extendable. So this is a really great stuff for that. The thing I like the most about Spryker is the consistency because it follows like the same structure. It, it's split into different layers, uh, both uh, application-wise and architectural-wise. So it's easy to split the logic of front-end and back-end into layers called uh, EVs and Zs. Also, we have separate layers for the client and for API, which makes it easier to understand a model even if you haven't uh, worked with it before uh, because most of them follow the same structure that saves the time of the developer and the consistency i think it's the most important thing uh, in our everyday job the modularity behind the the whole architecture um, and with a plugin uh, stack patterns everywhere, the facade factories and, and the way you can easily recognize where to go. The modularity of the packages and the, it's really easy to develop huge features when you get, like, get going and there's no magic, there's no methods that uh, do something but you don't know why does it do it, how does it do it. And uh, it's really structured and great for the like big feature or big e-commerce whole project development. So um, this is why Spryker is really good. I, I have taken one course which was called Developer Bootcamp. Uh, that's the short one. It took me like less than a week, maybe three days or something. The best thing about it is that it's free, so anyone can attend it and it's like a completely beginner friendly. I mean, beginner Spryker developer level because it covers like the whole basics of the architecture and during that module you get some hands-on experience on the demo project and you get familiar with the main parts like uh, the front end, the back end, the client and yeah I think that that's a great way to start. Because it was for free and I wanted to actually prove myself that I was capable of having the certificate basically. There, there are companies which uh, needs the certificate there are maybe agencies that they need to prove that they have the certificate for their developers. I wanted to actually prove for myself that I actually deserve to be here, deserve the, 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 the job, deserve. I wanted to, to, to put myself into a limit. So I think it's a good challenge. 
The company looks way better if, if it has like more certified developers. So when the client comes, it's they say that like we have like uh, 60 or 70 percent people certified in Spryker, which is really a good indicator for the company, which is trying to search for a good provider of Spryker service. Spryker middleware. Actually, I get to use it a lot because that's like a constructor which follows the pipeline pattern and it makes it way easier to create various kinds of data import. For example, we have to import old orders from legacy systems. We always have to import like products, uh, categories, prices and stuff. And Spryker offers a solution which is called Spryker Middleware, which makes it uh, way easier to grasp such topics because it has like built-in stages for data processing mm -hmm. and you can customize it to fit any of your needs. For example, if you're taking the data from CSV file, there's a predefined uh, like a class for that. You don't need to write it yourself. Uh, also, you can change it to take the data from API, for example. It gives you the ecosystem, the architecture that is, uh, is really nicely thought overall. Uh, for example, the separation between the, the front-end application and the back-end application, and then the admin, the admin side where it's uh, syncing in the background, the the data from the database and the Elasticsearch to optimize the search engine and also the, the Redis database to optimize the front-end view. So all of this is really well thought, in my opinion, that you don't need to worry much about these architectural decisions. Essentially, I think that the best thing that Spryker provides is the a lot of the implementation of things that you don't have to worry about because you know that great specialists which worked in the e-commerce x years uh, implemented this and if you need to just use it you can use it you can extend it uh, and it's uh, really flexible and also the structure of the whole spriker architecture is really enforcing you to write good code and is this is really important because there's are there are like architecture sniffers, code sniffers, and uh, static analysis things, which they won't let you write like unethical bad code. So it's not only like code reviews from your peers, which is really important, but still there's a lot of things that can help you like to write a better code.